What's up everyone? It's been a while. Haven't really had much time to make videos recently, but necessity dictates action. And in this case, I need to do some maintenance to my battery bank up here. So I figured I'd make a video about it and run you guys through the process that I go through for a maintenance session on these things and some other considerations for you to be aware of if you have an off-grid battery bank. So, starting off, this right here is a lead acid battery bank. And what that means is it's basically, these are like old school batteries. These are lead plates submerged in an electrolyte solution. They're flooded with water and yeah, there's some internal chemistry that goes on there. So the first thing that you may have noticed is these batteries are absolutely filthy right now. And the reason that these batteries are filthy is because I had an ant infestation and they got into this insulation and they're actually making a nest inside of it. So that's what all this powder all over the place is. Luckily, the poison that I put out for the ants took care of that, but I still need to clean this up. From my experience, a lot of the battery systems that I've seen off-grid, you know, the dirtier ones seem to be the ones that have the more problems. I don't know why, maybe it's just like general neglect, but the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of tidy up my area here. I'll take this stuff out of here. I got a shop vac. I'm going to clean everything up, make it look nice. And, you know, a big part of that is just like seeing what you're working with, seeing if you do have any other big issues in here, any corrosion or any loose connections or it's just good housekeeping. So let's go ahead and run through that first. So as you can see, I've had some residents living in here. Another good reason why it's always a good call to clean stuff up so you know what's going on. These three batteries over here don't really have anything to do with the system. It's these 10 over here that are the heart of my power system up here. But nevertheless, we'll clean everything up and then I'll run you through a maintenance cycle. So now that we've got things relatively cleaned up, you know, kind of just take a look at things. So you're, you're wanting to look for anything, any corrosion and spillage, just any kind of anything that might look wrong. Like over here, there's a little bit of corrosion at that terminal. Um, there's a little bit here, but really those terminals don't look bad to me. If you do have corrosion on your battery terminals, you can use hot water and baking soda and just pour it right over the top of the terminals and it should kind of eat up that, that white sort of growth. Over here, I do have some sort of an issue where it kind of looks like the battery's been spilling over and I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that yet, but we will revisit this at some point. The main thing that you should be doing as part of your lead acid battery maintenance is you should be checking the fluid levels. So, and this, you know, if you have a, a lithium ion battery bank or a lithium iron phosphate battery bank, this isn't really gonna be super helpful to you. But with lead acid batteries, each one of these holes is a two volt cell. So this is a six volt battery. And then I have this battery bank wired in series parallel, so this is 12 volts, this is 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts. It's a 12 volt system total, but um, you know, these two are, are wired in series to make 12. But if you look in there, you'll notice that there's fluid and you can actually see the, the lead plates down in there. They're those things that kind of look like the end grain of a piece of cardboard. 
it's critical that you never let those go dry. Um, I mean, it's probably not the worst thing in the world if it happens, but the battery is designed to function with those things submerged. So as part of your routine maintenance, you need to be checking to make sure that your batteries have enough water in them. And it's not just any kind of water, you need distilled water because you don't want to be putting all of those, like um, all of the minerals that come in tap water in your batteries. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check every battery cell, every two volt cell, and make sure that there's enough water in there. And the way that you do that, at least on these batteries, is it's easier to see on that one. See at the, at the tip of my fingernail, you can see where the plastic ends there. You want to fill it up enough so that the water hits the bottom of that plastic. And that slit that you see going up through the plastic is a vent. So I'll show you guys one cell. Maybe I'll show you this one because it's in the sunlight and you'll be able to see it pretty easily. But I'll show you how much you want to fill it up and then you just repeat that with every battery. So let's go ahead and do that right now. See at the tip of my fingernail there? That's the plastic that you want to fill the water up to. So and you want to try to do this without, uh, without spilling too much. And I'm kind of having to do this at an awkward angle so that you guys can see, but... Alright, see how that water is touching the, the bottom of the plastic now? That's how much I like to fill my batteries up to. And then of course, if you have any spillage, which you probably will, you want to just get a paper towel and kind of clean it up. And this also gives you an opportunity to clean up the rest of the, the tops of your batteries. Because again, at least in my opinion, I think that keeping things clean in a battery bank is important. For no other reason than you can see problems easier. So what we did there, we're going to repeat to every single cell in the battery bank. So the fact that I actually went through over a half a gallon of water filling these things up tells me that I was a little bit late on on doing this. I should have checked on this a little earlier. Uh, none of the plates were dry, which is good, but I'd say for a responsible maintenance schedule, you should probably be checking your flooded lead acid batteries about once a month just to make sure that they have enough water. So in terms of routine maintenance, I would say putting water is like the biggest thing and keeping things clean and tidy and just making sure you're aware of issues that may be arising in your battery bank. What we're also going to do today is we're going to do an equalization charge. Now, this isn't something that you need to do as routinely as checking the water in your batteries, but I would say that it's something that you should probably do two times a year, um, you know, if not more. I think the there's kind of some debate online as to how often you should equalize, but essentially what equalizing your batteries does is boils them. And in any normal situation, that's a bad thing. You don't want to be putting enough voltage into your batteries to get them to boil. But what boiling also does is, or <laughs> what equalizing also does, is it churns up the electrolyte mixture within the batteries, the distilled water and the fluid that's in there, and it prevents what's called acid stratification. So as the batteries sit over time, the water and the acid that are in the batteries will actually settle out into different layers. So boiling them kind of mixes everything back up and it also knocks any sulfate crystals that have grown on the lead plates off, which will reduce the, the battery efficiency and lifespan. So 
I can, there's, there's a few different ways you can do an equalized charge. For me, I can either do it off of my inverter charger here, um, if I have my generator running, or I can actually run an equalization cycle off of my charge controllers for my solar panels. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be running the equalization charge off of the solar panels. So that's something that I can control um, from an app on my phone, which is pretty cool. Um, I basically just tell it to do an equalization charge. And for my battery voltage, that's about 16 volts, which is, it's pretty high. I mean, the maximum that these batteries see during a normal charging cycle, I think is 14.7. So yeah, 16 is quite a bit. And I'll show you, once I start the equalization cycle, I'll show you what it looks like. You can actually see the fluid in there bubbling. And another really important thing to note is that when you do do an equalization cycle, it off gases hydrogen gas. That's what's bubbling out of it. So you don't want to be, you know, smoking or having any open flames near your batteries because hydrogen gas is extremely flammable. And yeah, just be safe when you're doing this. I got to make sure that my panel is in full sunlight before I start this. And I think the cycle lasts about an hour and we'll get it set up and rolling. So I went up and I looked at my solar panels, which are on top of the carport up there. My main solar panels that I'm going to be using for the equalizing charge are in shade right now. So I wanted to take a moment to talk about one other tool that you can put in your belt to help you diagnose problems with your battery bank, and that is doing a specific gravity test. This is called a hydrometer. It looks like this. Basically how that works is you would open, open up your battery, you would take this thing, stick it in there, pump it a couple times, get water in there, you want to kind of mix it up, pump it in and out a few times. And then wherever that needle points is where your specific gravity is. Now where this becomes useful, I'm going to pump all that back into the cell. Now where this thing becomes useful is if you're noticing that your battery bank isn't performing as it should. It's not getting the voltages it should get. It's not lasting as long. You could potentially have a bad cell in the bank. So in this battery bank, there's three cells per battery and there's 10 batteries. So there's 30 cells that could go wrong here. And you can use this hydrometer to test each cell for their specific gravity to see if one of them might be off. Somewhere around here. This is the last, this is the last specific gravity test that I did. You know, I wrote the date down, the time, the temperature, the voltage, and then the specific gravity for every cell that I tested. And, you know, your, your battery's owner's manual should give you like good operating ranges for the specific gravity that your battery should be at. And these were all intolerance, so, you know, these were fine. But if you had one of these show up real low or real high, that could indicate that you have either a problematic cell or a dead cell that ultimately is affecting the health of the whole bank. That's just another good thing to, to keep in mind. I don't usually test this thing very often, and I run equalization charges pretty pretty regularly, and I think that that helps keeps the, keep the specific gravity constant. We'll wait for those panels to get some sunlight, and then run this equalization charge. I've been having a little bit of trouble, um, just because it's been a while since I've done this, the charge controllers want to either be in absorption phase or float stage float phase before an equalization charge happens so i've kind of tricked them into doing it right now i think we're running about 15 volts 
like I said before, this for my setup, it really should be closer to 16 volts, but I don't know if you can hear that, that kind of ever so slight bubble. But if we pop open one of these, you can see in there, let's see. You can see that they're bubbling and that's what we want. It could even be more vigorous than that. But all of these batteries are bubbling like that right now. And that essentially means that they're off gassing hydrogen gas and boiling. In fact, these already need more water added to them. That was another thing that I wanted to mention that I'm, I'm kind of glad that I, I just said that, is you always want to add water before you do an equalization charge and after, because you will boil water out of these when you're doing this. So be careful. We're going to let this run its course for about an hour. And yeah, I'll check back in with you guys at the end. All right, everybody. Well, the equalization charge cycle has finished. I kind of set, set it and then I went down to the local river and went for a swim, just came back. It's kind of in the evening now, starting to get dark, but that pretty much concludes the maintenance cycle for these batteries. I mean, water equalization, clean things up, look for corrosion. Those are kind of the main things. Again, if you have a different battery chemistry, your maintenance routine will be different, but for lead acid, they're pretty forgiving and that's really all you need to do. If you guys would like me to talk more about this system that I've set up for myself, um, you know, I make all my own power up here. Of course, you can hear a generator running right now. That's for the, the well, but yeah, this is all kind of a homebrew system and I'd be more than happy to talk about it if people are interested, so. If you are, go ahead and leave a comment, let me know, and yeah, if you want to see more off-grid type videos of me doing this sort of stuff up here, uh, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned, because I'm always doing something interesting up here, so until the next video, thanks for watching, see ya.